revision ACL cases in consideration of when to do extraarticular procedures. I will present one of my own failures, which I thought the graft was in the right place. We have to think about why an ACL reconstruction repair failed, reconstruction failed. Was it surgeon error, patient going back too quickly, graft choice, higher risk factors in the individual such as recur bottom, bony, and others. So when you do a revision, now we have to decide whether to do an extra articular procedure and what procedure to do. So we'll review those procedures. And you must look in the literature from 30 years ago, a generation ago, we did a lot of extra articular reconstructions prior to our ability to do arthroscopically aided ACL reconstructions and put it back in an anatomic spot. I'm Mary Lloyd Ireland, a 17-year-old University of Kentucky freshman. He was playing pick up basketball, landed awkwardly three months prior to my seeing him, and he underwent a bone patellar tendon bone autograft and medial meniscus repair. I saw him one time post-op, and he came back about five months post-op, stating that he slipped on the ice. He had been seen playing basketball, but he retore his ACL and medial meniscus, unsure exactly when, probably a month after his ACL reconstruction, when he returned to basketball too quickly. It's very important in this high-risk age group who will go do activities that we, the surgeons, don't approve of to try to see them back and counsel them on how important it is to follow the first six-month post-op restrictions uh, based on their findings so they don't re-tear their ACL. So here we have a 17-year-old freshman who's already had one ACL reconstruction his first semester, and then his second semester needs to have a second one. He's not doing very well in school, by the way. Here are my first radiographs. It's always good to critique the radiographs to see is the, are the tunnels in the right place. As I critique these, it looks like we're very well posterior. You can see the tunnel here. My plug from his autograft is well posterior, so I'd say that's a couple of millimeters. However, we can't totally know the position of the graft on plain films. We'd need a CT scan or an MRI to better tell that for sure. Um, the screws are well paralleling the plugs. You can see where I don't bone graft the tibia, I did bone graft the patella, and um, I like using the, say, the 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock position is where I like to put the graft, not too low, but you want to be posterior and in the anatomic right spot, get that target, get that collagen in the right spot, and a single bundle technique has been what I've done. So that first post-op visit, I thought it looked pretty good. Saw him five months later, and this is his actual revision ACL allograft. I used the bone patellar tendon allograft, and you can see here where I was able to do this in one stage. I ended up using uh, Smith Nephew Bio RCI screws. So here's his uh, plug, uh, the two plugs. So uh, I got good uh, fill of the tunnels. Tunnels did not have uh, any significant osteolysis to them, probably because of um, using the metal uh, screws and also having bone in the tunnels. Uh, so here's his um, uh, lateral view, uh, and this is his post-op view of his second ACL reconstruction where I used an allograft on him, bone patellar tendon bone. This is um, his arthroscopic picture. You can see where he has some synovialization of the graft, but it is clearly torn, nothing attached up to the femur. Sometimes it can be difficult to getting the, the femoral screw out, but usually there's good bone around it. So using the osteotome around the screw and then uh, pushing the, putting the screw uh, clockwise, then counterclockwise, uh, make sure the screw head is seated. 
Uh, and then I like using the Schlesinger clamp to remove this. And so now we're faced with a uh, tunnel that is in the right place. So we're going to have to use that same tunnel. We have to make a decision of whether we go over the top. Do we do an outside in guide? Do we go through the same tunnel? So this is now um, five months after his previous ACL reconstruction. And I elected to um, that my spot, my femoral tunnel was in a good position wanted to change the the um, uh, position of it from the standpoint of the exiting so that we didn't get into bone that I could not secure the graft with. So I did use uh, the pinpoint developed by Dr. Uh, Darren Johnson, an outside-in guide, and did an IT band uh, cut. I didn't go through the, uh, the cortex laterally, and this is my fixation with the bio-RCI on the uh, femur. Um, very happy with the uh, allograft, unhappy that he failed the first um, autograft. Um, and then here's our finished um, ACL reconstruction of his left knee. The unfortunate thing was his meniscus tear. You can see here where the meniscus is totally beat up. He had a um, repair previously. You can see the fast fix back there on that tibial side. So when I've done revisions, it seems like the meniscus tissue is what fails. It's not necessarily our fixation, but those sutures uh, cut through the bad tissue. So unfortunately, ended up with a 50% uh, partial medial meniscectomy that in a 17-year-old um, is not the best thing. So, and you can see where uh, even though he's only five months after his first ACL reconstruction, he's already got some articular cartilage injury of grade two chondromalacia. Bad situation for him, so he should be followed with uh, counseling on his activity level, his amount of axial loading, amount of basketball play, and followed up with yearly x-rays as long as we can uh, find him. I haven't seen him back. And this is an example of removing those uh, fast-fix uh, devices. Fortunately, they're small enough where they don't cause articular cartilage wear, but you can just see where this meniscus is, uh, uh, is a complex tear, tibial side unstable, uh, that I had to do a partial meniscectomy. No way that this could be repaired. Just comments about revision ACL reconstruction. Femoral hardware removal can be tough. This is a right revision. Uh, so using your osteotome and making sure you get that um, relatively hard cancellous bone out first is good. Go forward, put your uh, uh, screwdriver in all the way, seat it all the way so you don't strip it. Go forward and then go backward. That seems like a, a way that I've been able to do uh, the hardware removal in the simplest way. Sometimes the hardware removal is a harder situation than you expect can be harder than the actual uh, case. And then you can see that sclerotic bone around that femoral screw. In this case, I was able to go more posterior with the revision uh, and pass the graft up. And um, in this case, use the metal screw. Uh, the bio-RCI screws are nice because you, they go in one millimeter increments in diameter, whereas the um, metal ones go in two. So the ACL revision, uh, successful. Particularly in revision cases, it's very important for the surgeon who performs the ACL reconstruction has to drive the return to play train. You don't want to have to do a third revision. So oftentimes it's the parents of the young athletes that have to get back at a certain time, uh, whether it's scholarship or missing out on a whole season, and it's much better for them to be totally prepared and after a revision it could be up to a year before they return to that sport and consideration of other sports or less risky sports should be a discussion that you have with the parents, the young athletes, and the coaches. Usually the trainers and the physicians are on the same page. It's the parents in particular that need to understand what the potential problems are with this if there's another failure, potential arthritis or uh, really changing um, in the patient's fear of re-injury, depression, other psychologic, emotional issues that they may have. So we need to be the protector of these young athletes um, in some ways, but stick to our guns and don't let these um, athletes, particularly after revision, go back to their sport too quickly. We do the surgery and we should drive the return to play train as well. This is a good time to ask questions, uh, discuss the cases, discuss revisions, what pearls 
uh, the attendings or others may have, what cases they've shared, even talk about um, some of the things you remember about hard revisions. You usually want to put the revision surgery on at the end of the day because you never know how long it's going to take. Be prepared with C-arm if you need it. Difficulty in getting hardware out. Make sure you know what hardware was put in so you can have the correct extraction instruments. Be prepared. Any questions? Reflect and uh, get your uh, attendings or those in your conference and what they feel about the newer techniques and advances in instrumentation. Now's the time to share some of these cases, research it, and figure out what you're going to do when you're in practice. Experience is the name everyone gives to their mistakes, Oscar Wilde. Good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. Remember some of these quotes and uh, Understand that you will have complications, there will be challenging times, but be humble and be kind and take care of your patients the way you want to be taken care of. Thank you very much, Water Buck in Africa. Please uh, go to my website. This will be on the website as will other presentations. And if you would like to reach out to me, contact me, I would be happy to help you in any way.